Hello, I'm Carol Berenger, and I'm the owner of Pilates and More in Wayne, Pennsylvania. And this is a series that the Radnor Memorial Library has asked me to do for the fall. It will be five um, consecutive two weeks, so we're going to go ten weeks. So this will take us up to Thanksgiving. And the whole idea is we want to fall back with the clock into wellness. So the series is called Fall Back Into Wellness, and we're going to begin. Uh, Pilates is a method of movement that's corrective in nature. So when you were a little kid, you started to walk, you knew how to move. And then we start doing things with our limbs and we lose control of walking, working from our center. We lose consciousness of it. We were never probably conscious of it in the beginning. So we're going to begin today with just getting back in touch with our bodies with fundamental movements. So in life, we use forward flexion, which is most comfortable for all of us because everything happens in front of us. And then there's forward flexion, there's extension, side bending, and rotation. So we get stuck up front. So these fundamental movements are going to reintroduce all of these ranges of motion safely back into our bodies so that no matter what we do, whether we're driving the car, sitting at the computer, walking or driving, so this is how we get around through life. We stand, we walk, we sit, and we drive. And so we are just going to figure out how to best organize our bodies to use all of our bodies to do everything so that it works in harmony. So we are going to use, so if you are at home, you want to be on a, a carpeted surface if you have a yoga mat, you still want to be on a, a, a carpet or something softer. If you are on um, hard wood, you would want a, a thicker mat, maybe about three yoga mats, and you could put towel, a towel underneath you. You just want to feel padded but supported. So we're going to get up and down. So most people struggle, like the, the, our abs, our abdominals, our, our center, um, helps us get up and down. And especially the one on the front that people want to look like a six pack. So if you just take a hold of one leg and roll up and down, that's actually an exercise for your abdominals. And then switch legs. And if you struggle with this, you still want to be able to get up and down safely. You can always turn to your side and come down and roll. So getting up and down is pretty important for your whole life. So we're just going to start with finding a neutral spine. And a neutral spine, if you've seen the first series, the summer series, I went into that in, in detail. And do feel free, there'll be my email at the bottom of the screen, to contact me and ask questions. So we want to find our neutral spine. There should be space behind the neck, a natural curve. Your rib cage curves a little bit the other direction. Your low back should have a little bit of space, not a lot, not none, right in the middle. And then those are, are and our tailbone naturally curls under, and that's where your pelvic floor is, and which should be the foundation of us standing up. So we're going to find our neutral spine lying down. So lie down with your hips, your knees, your feet in alignment. And your hips, this is your pelvis, your hips are right here where this bone goes into your pelvis. So just follow your thigh bone down into your body and draw a circle, and that's your hip sockets. We're going to put our hands in our low belly, making a triangle, and a neutral spine, a neutral pelvis, will be when the hands are flat. So we're going to press the curve out of the back and tip the tailbone up. And then we're going to send the tailbone down and over-accentuate the arch in the low back. And then exhale to do this will help. So breathing is going to be coached. Uh, and as long as you're not holding your breath, you're going to be okay. But breath can help you find movement. Exhale. Tilt the spine so that you lose the curve. And then inhale and find it back a little bit accentuated. And then come back to where you're neutral and your hands will be parallel. Then that's the bottom of your spine. The top of your spine, so you have a tailbone and then your first cervical vertebra that your head floats on with soft tissue is called the atlas and it only goes back and forth like this. So this is called a cervical, cervical spine is your neck, nod. So you're just nodding your nose 
and chin up and down and then <clears throat> make a circle with your nose on the ceiling maybe the size of an orange so that's your sef second cervical vertebra is called the axis and that and this is relaxing i'll bet you feel very relaxed doing this so now that we've found the top of the spine with the atlas and the axis and the tailbone moving up and down is the bottom of your spine what we want to do is create a lot of space for flexibility so having space between your joints creates flexibility and releases tightness so we want to find the natural curves with our spine as lengthened as possible the easiest way to do this is to just take out the curve in your back and lift your bottom in the air reach your knees forward so you're not plugging the weight into your shoulders and then start up here at your breastbone and sink down and just roll one bone at a time softly into your mat or carpet and all the way down until your hands are flat again across from hip socket to hip socket so when your hands are flat that means that you're in neutral and you should find that you have a little bit of space there weight in your shoulder blades and rib cage and that you have a natural curve here now sometimes um, we a lot of people have forward head hang just from going forward in life a lot we our head leads so if you have a lot of this and it's too tight to bring it down you can take a pillow or um, only enough that you can come to this neutral space or a towel and fold it now we're going to start um, moving in neutral and we're going to start with the the bottom of the body so you can keep your hands on your low belly and you're just going to pick up a knee till you're in this tabletop position and then float it away and then place that foot down and float the other one up so we're going to talk about the middle of your leg is your knee so since we want to work from our center and then our limbs and our limbs we're going to work from the knee floating up and down keeping this stable so the stable part of the body is working with the moving part of the body and that's where balance comes from and if you mindfully do these small movements you can create a, a pretty strong workout and from this and then you're going to inhale and bring up one knee and we're going to exhale to bring up the second one and we're going to inhale to place the first one down and exhale the second your abdominals on an exhale come towards your skeleton your spine especially and hold you in neutral so a second movement up and down is more strenuous so we're going to inhale and bring up one knee exhale to bring up the other inhale to place one down and exhale the other and then reverse that bring up that knee and then the other and all of this is very um, good for opening up the joints which relieves a lot of stress in the body so now that we have those are called knee folds single when we did them one at a time and double you're going to bring up the first knee and find that comfortable position in the neutral pelvis and put your hand on your knee and circle your knee around and your pelvis might wobble that means that you have um, some restriction in your hip socket and then go the other way and use your breath to try and keep stable here as you stir this thigh bone in your hip socket and then place that one down put the hand on the low belly again so you can get tactile feedback from your abdominals into your hand to your brain pick up the other leg make the tabletop position and stir around and while these are small movements they're coaxing your body into moving with ease once we stand up on two feet and then place that foot down then we're going to sway the knees so as we talked about there's a forward flexion and extension sideways um, bending and, and rotation this will do a little bit of all of that for the hip sockets so you're going to separate your feet and you're going to sway your knees to one side and you'll feel an opening in the top hip socket and then use your abdominals and exhale and bring yourself back and then take it over to the other side and bring it back we are only going to do three of each 
The first one's like a pancake. You try it and maybe it doesn't feel so easy or it doesn't feel as comfortable. But if you do these while you're breathing, especially, usually by the third one, you think, ah. Oh. All right, so that's our lower body. We're going to now um, in a, in, with bent knees. And then we're gonna slide the leg out. We're gonna slide one leg out and reach through the heel. And you'll feel, this is if you were standing up and walking, this is the first leg going forward and then the next one. And you'll feel the movement. So this is how much is going on when you're walking. And walking is one of the best exercises we can do because it gets us from one place to the other in life in general. And if we do it with good body mechanics, it uses your whole body. It uses your arms swing, your legs move. So these are leg slides. And this is to just get you in, to, in, in touch with the back of your legs. Then we're going to do something that really opens the hip called butterfly slides. And it's going to incorporate the folding that we did with the feet down. So we're going to open the legs and the soles of the feet come together. You're going to, let's keep them open as we straighten the legs out and get them as long as they can go. Then turn the knees to the ceiling and pull in. I got overzealous there. I was going to incorporate two things. So you're just going to open your knees and press the legs straight. Turn the knees to the ceiling and pull them in. This is called butterfly slides. You're supported by gravity and you're keeping your torso stable and we're moving through a circular motion in the hip sockets and then push out because many people are working from home and sitting more during the past few months. And so this will open up the hip sockets that you've been, you know, having your torso weight and for most of the day. Now we're gonna do a crossover of the leg and whatever knee is on top, you're gonna to go in that direction. So this is, we did the um, separated legs. Now we have a weighted um, twist where the leg is putting weight and then inhale, exhale, come back by using your abdominals. Switch. And what we'll do here, instead of doing three to each side, we'll take three breaths when we're in this position. And the third exhale is what brings us back. So now we've moved the bottom part of the body and we had gotten into this perfect alignment of the neutral spine. And when we move one part of our body, it usually makes the spine go back to our old habit. So to reorganize, you're just going to do another shoulder bridge to lengthen and um, decompress the spine at the same time as you're using the muscles to control it. So get rid of the curve in your back, lift your bottom, reach your knees forward, and then you're gonna sink from the breastbone and roll down one bone at a time. And the tricky part is to get the lumbar spine where the back of the waist is to release, to get everything to touch on the way down. So we've done the bottom part of the body. Now we're gonna work with the top part of the body. You're gonna take your arms long at your side and we're gonna do snow angel arms. So you're just gonna push out from your armpits and you're just gonna let your arms turn naturally to take them overhead. Now, when you go overhead, your ribs might wanna come up. So you wanna keep that part stable so we don't lose the natural curves. So your arms might be raised up. So just reach out of your armpits and whatever the top of the arm does, the bottom arm will follow. So reach out from the armpits. So the top bone in your body is called the humerus and the bottom part of your arm has two bones, the radius and the ulnar, and they'll just follow. And then we have our hands, which are our extremity that's following the movement from the center of your body. So when people talk about working from their center or strengthening their core, your core is keeping you stable while your limbs are moving. So the next one we're going to do, so we've rotated out to the side. <clears throat> we're going to take the arms up to the ceiling and we're going to shrug them first. We're going to pick the shoulders up, reach your fingers to the ceiling and then plop them down and then reach up and plop them down and reach up and plop them down. So now we have the shoulders. So the, the mat that you're on is giving your back feedback that you don't get when you're standing in space so that when we stand up, you'll feel that you have a, a back of your body. 
So we're going to do windmills now to take the arms apart in this direction. So we took them apart sideways and then exhale, pull them back. So long levers make the center stabilize and the stabilized center creates more range of motion. So again, your range of motion is yours. You're, you're going to inhale. So if you can only go this far without popping your body out of alignment, that's your working level. And your working level can be different day to day. And if you do these consistently, so we have two weeks that this particular video is going to be available to you. If you do those for the two weeks, it'll start to set in. The rule of thumb is that in 10 times you feel it, 20 times you see it, and 30 times your body owns it. That's like making or uh, breaking a new habit. The next one we're going to do is called hug a tree. You're going to round your arms. So I'm going to turn just so you can see like I'm holding a, a beach ball or a basket on my chest and my shoulders are down away from my ears. My shoulder blades are feel heavy into the mat, but we're going to slide the shoulder blades together and that's going to open your arms. So the same things we did with the butterfly slides with the legs so that the pelvis, so that the, the bone, the femur bone, which is the top of your thigh moved in your hip socket, we're doing all these motions with the upper body that are doing the same thing, moving your arms in the shoulder girdle. So let's make a circle out of all of these movements. So we're going to reach overhead out to the side and back around. So we're not steering with the hands, we're steering with the upper body, the upper arm bone in the upper body so that the arms will just naturally turn with the bone moving in the shoulder socket just like our legs did in the hip sockets. So everything matches, our hip sockets and our shoulder sockets, our rotating joints. And breathe, inhale and exhale. Just keep your breath flowing. We might focus later on with some intentional breathing and that will help you um, get into deeper um, connections with your muscles. So now we've done everything that we're gonna do on our back. We're going to go on to our bellies. So just roll over and come onto your belly. Take your hands and overlap them and put your forehead on your hands. And then just wobble your hips from side to side to get your legs close. So now we're going to find our neutral spine while we're prone on our belly. So when you're on your back, you're supine. When you're on your belly, you're prone. So we're going to rest the head on the hands. And the, the easiest way to find this is we're just going to think of pulling your belly away from your shirt. So if you just think of pulling your belly away from the mat or away from your shirt, you'll see that my um, glutes engage and my hamstrings and you'll feel pressure in your thighs and in your pelvis. And that is lifting your belly off the mat. Like you almost feel like ants could go right under your belly button. So the first thing we're going to do is learn how to lengthen our leg from here. So you're just going to slide your one leg so long through the heel that it lifts up an inch or two off the mat. And then place that one down and then lengthen the other one so long that it finally comes off. And just two more to each side. Just reach so long. So we're getting flexibility and strength here at the same time because as we reach the muscles are coming towards the skeleton and moving it through space in sequence so that your joints get to decompress at the same time as all your muscles are engaging together all the way around the skeleton. Now we're going to take one arm and then the other out in front of us and take the head down onto the mat, pull the belly away from the shirt, and you're going to reach one leg so long that it comes up and lower it and then the opposite arm and then the opposite leg and the opposite arm and then you're going to try to reach the opposite arm and opposite leg at the same time and they might only come up an inch but you want to feel like you're owning all your real estate, that you're getting so long that everything just floats up. And what your body is doing, and that we're not even consciously aware of, is that it's engaging 
the back of the body to lift you up against gravity, at the same time balancing it with the parts of the body that are on the mat and being supported by gravity. Then bend your elbows again and bring your forehead onto your hands. Wobble the hips from side to side again to bring the legs close. Now, if you're in uncomfortable in your low back at all, do separate your feet. That'll take some tension out of the low back. You're gonna hover your head by just picking your nose straight up off the mat, and you'll feel um, literally your armpits engage. So what's happening is we're engaging straight up through there so that you're in the front of your arm, the back of your arm, the front of your, uh, on your chest and in your shoulder blades. So everything through the entire connection that I call the steering wheel connection is engaging. And then hover your head again and lower. And again, we're staying with this series of three to find the engagement. Now the next time you come up, you can drag your nose and chin forward and lift your breastbone a little bit and you'll feel this is gonna be great for when we get to the series on planking because you want to feel the whole upper body engagement all the way through the steering wheel connection which is from fingertip to fingertip using the front of your body. Lengthen the breastbone forward and that'll help you raise up a little higher and your head follows your spine without any tension, so we're not forcing anything. Just hovering the head, gazing forward, lifting the breastbone. So everything in this whole upper body connection is working together. Now we're gonna come to a quadruped position. And you're gonna have one hand under each shoulder, one knee under each hip. Spread your fingers and then turn the pointy part of your elbows back towards your thighs. So loosen that again, turn the elbows out, and then pull the elbows back to point towards your thighs and you'll feel how the muscles in the back of your body engage. So they're engaging in, and equalizing what's happening in, in the front and the back. Now look at each knee and make sure it's under each hip and think of pressing your shins down. Now, some people will get cramps in their feet because they're not used to, this is called plantar flexion, pointing the foot, and it can create some tension in your arch. So you can take your feet this way. And, and that also will improve with, very, um, with, with this gentle effort, but with consistency. So you're gonna press the palms down and the shins down, let the head and tailbone go downward as you round up like an angry cat. And then you're gonna push your tailbone forward and lengthen your breastbone. And then again, curl the tailbone and the crown of the head down towards the floor and pull your abs away from your shirt. And that'll round and pressing down into your hands and chins like you're gonna levitate and then lengthen. So we're in neutral here. We're not going to an arch and letting our abs go. We're just going to this tabletop and then tailbone down, crown of the head down, pull the abs in. Then in this position, just take your hips from side to side, we call this wagging your tail, and then find your neutral position, and we're gonna side bend in the quadruped position. So you're gonna keep your pelvis still, and you're gonna lift, you're gonna look over your left shoulder, keeping your hips still, so that will make your spine do a capital J. So this is a side bend in a quadruped position, and then come back to center, and then look over your right shoulder, keeping your pelvis still, and that will side bend you there. And we'll go two more to each side. And just keep your breath flowing. And you'll feel gentle weight shift And if your wrists are getting sore, it's, you wanna just pull up your belly weight. So if you just pull your belly away from your shirt, it lightens you on your hands and your knees. Now we're gonna do some side bending and twisting. If you're comfortable in this 
cross-legged position, or you can sit in a chair a position if you can bring a chair, a hard back chair, or um, some people are comfortable in this type of position, but that usually is less comfortable for people that are in this position. So I know you've all seen a spiraling barber shop. So we are going to open up our spine and circulate our abdominals around it. So you're going to place your hands on your knees and you're going to pull your belly away from your shirt. So basically when we do this, and if you followed the other um, series that I did, we had a trick of putting the pinky in the belly button, a thumb on the breastbone and pulling it apart. So we create space in the spine. So we're going to start from the bottom to the top because that's how that barbershop spiral occurs. We're going to take the belly button to the side, the ribs, the shoulders, and then the head last. And then you're going to bring the belly back, the ribs back, the shoulders, and then the head floats. Belly button, ribs, shoulders, and head. And I'm sure that many of you are catching yourself wanting to go with your head first. So we lead with our extremities for the most part. Belly button, ribs, shoulders, and then eyes and then belly button, ribs, shoulders, and eyes. And we're almost done. We just have one more movement after this. And then we might do a bonus. I'm not sure if that was three, so we'll do one more just for good luck. And belly, ribs, shoulders, and then eyes. If you have come into this position, you're going to switch your legs because we always go to the, our favorite side first. And if you were sitting in this position, you're going to switch them to the other side. We're going to side bend. So you're going to take your arms out to the side. And as if you had something that you were pressing on on both sides, you're going to press down and lift up through your breastbone. And then we're going to go over like an airplane, reach this arm. So we're going to lengthen through the top side to take a side bend here. And just let your head follow your spine and then reach to the ceiling to pull yourself back through center. So each time we do this, we're creating more space in the spine. Two more to each direction, and each time you go, just take it one half inch further and come up through the center. And again, leaving your breath just flow with your body. Last one to each side. And each time you do it, you can try and take it just a little further. That's it for today. And if you do this for the next two weeks, you will reconnect with your body and be ready to move stronger and with more flexibility through the next four sessions. Again, email me with any questions and I'll be happy to respond. Thanks for sharing your time with me.